okay? But the role of intellect will still be there paramount because because the intellect would have told you, the, 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 the intellect would have guided you in not worshipping anything else other than God because it would have directed you to worship God alone because you would know that by intellect alone that God deserves our worship. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the question about Islam's role and understanding of life is such that human beings are created with this purpose and they are well suited to fulfill that purpose. So even so if you're born... So the purpose born, of us is to help... Okay, so say if I become a Muslim now, if I yeah. maybe. Yeah. But how would I... So obviously I, I do feel like a sense of connection and gratitude towards something. But like I've never... No, no, ever might be surrounded by anything so anti that. So no, I don't know why. So Second, sorry? Where I'm from, like people are very... Anti-religious, is it? Yeah. Okay. In every sense, like, they, they try to infiltrate that into me. Yeah. But I always felt like a different... I've always felt gratitude yeah. in a way. So how would I live my life now if I was yeah. a Muslim? How would sure. I change? Yeah. What was so I, okay. firstly, you need to have this confidence and faith strong. Because once you have a strong faith and confidence, you can bear whatever comes to you patiently. You might have difficulties from friends and families and so on. But because you recognize the truth, you will and you can continue your life with that belief. Once you have that truth within you, it doesn't matter how hard it is, you would know that, okay, no one can somehow force me into doing whatever. Because people should, number one, respect your wishes. That becoming a Muslim, I am not suddenly taking my life away. Like you think you're, you're scared, my, your family might think, oh, you're going to now no longer be my daughter. You're going to take your life away and, and become like a zombie. Or no, you will not only improve in your character. I'm sure you have a good character and, and good personality already. Uh, no doubt about it. It's already reflective of uh, you know, the, the, what I've discussed so far. But you will excel and develop and enhance your noble character that is already and you will demonstrate that in terms of your interactions, of, of your etiquettes, the love, the care, the support, the, the, the attitude that you have. People will see the difference. They will automatically see that I want to be like you. Because how is it that you're not lying, you're not cheating, you're not... Um, being rude and sarcastic and, and, and mocking but you're being so much caring and respectful and helping and being kind and showing so much more sympathy and empathy you're like a person which people say i want to be like that how can i be not like that when you see the difference their reaction will change when you see that you're more connecting with your parents giving them more care and support and more honor and more respect and more help um, that's not something that they expected. They will say, actually, what am I losing? I'm gaining more. I'm gaining more and more for my daughter that I see in my daughter a change which is in the good direction. That my daughter is not going downhill. She's uplifting herself in terms of her independence of thought, critical thinking, behavior, and righteous actions. She's being more and more charitable. She is being more what I'm aspiring to be. Imagine. If you had all that money and people say, oh, look at this miserable individual, they don't spend a penny. You don't have money and you're giving away to charity. You're saying, this poor person is more need than I have. Someone hungry, almost dying, and you're about to eat, and you say, no, 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 no. That person deserves this food more than I do. When people see this action, the change in your character, no one will say like, oh, what have you become? What have you become? So that will, uh, well, this is our uh, brother, uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Muhammad, if you have any question, you can do ask him. Um, we'll explain to you how the transformation comes to you. Sure. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did he not say, how come I call it as Inna li utammima makarim wal akhlaq. That I have not been raised except to perfect the nobility of character. Yes. Actually, one of the things is that it comes back. Yeah, I can. One of those ones who I met, I met her mother, and then she said to me, the mother of this lady, she said to me, I wish my other daughter had even this one last time. So she became a better person, she became close to me. So this one would be our good character. 
So, because one of the things is not trying to put blood pressure, whatever we get, it's not about what the people see. So, if the action is not and secondly, I believe it's really the eyes of Allah and Allah is the same. And that's Allah, Allah can do something else. For example, Baba Rabbi Ta'ala, that's a big idea. But in my opinion, it's not an expression to worship Allah and to be good with him. So it is something in Europe or in America. So that's why sometimes you say, how can, how can I be comfortable for the Muslim? What I'm saying is that actually the only way will be the Muslim. The Muslim will always, they always say to the brothers and the brothers, if you want to do it. I say, what is the best component of God? Yeah. So what? What I would I would like to understand from you is this. Firstly, do you accept that there definitely is a creator and who is one and only? Or do you still have doubt about God's existence? Because that is important firstly to appreciate and acknowledge within ourselves as the truth of reality. That belief. But it's, it's hard for me to say that I agree. Sure. It's, it's like a resistance inside me to say yes. Or okay. Agree to so like let's let's help you build on that belief to to be convinced intellectually. Yeah. Convinced more intellectually. You see, if we are now here, something existing. Do you think there was a time there was absolute nothingness? Is it possible to have the absolute nothingness? Is it possible for there to be nothing? I don't think there is. Yeah. Can no. there ever be just nothing? Nothing will generate nothing. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, that's what I do. Right. It's just, so in the uh, Quran, in the Quran, Allah tells us, you see, to, 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 to you see, the, the, the way to convince ourselves about this absolutely or in the existence of the Creator is to really develop ourselves critically minded, critical thinking. Allah says, "Am khuliqu min ghairi shayin am humul khaliqun, am khalaqu al-samawati wal-ard, bal la yuqinun." Am khuliqu min ghairi shayin. Were they created? from nothingness, from nothing. Or were they themselves the creators? Did they create the heavens and the earth? Yeah. Nay, they have no firm faith. So the Quran reasons with us, and you would know, that we did not come from nothingness at one point, because nothingness doesn't have any power to create. It doesn't even exist. So nothingness could not create. So that means there has to be always something. So why do you think we were created? Is That's, there a reason? There is a reason. So, do you accept there has to be always something? Yeah, I do. So now, what does that mean? Like, it's just a well, it's this... nothing, because nothing itself is something. Can I mention something? Nothing is something. Right? Yeah, nothing is something. Right? No, I said nothing. Listen, yeah. let, 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 yes. let me just clarify something. Yeah? So now here, since you said, there is a creator. This creator, it has to have main three characteristics. It has many characteristics. It has to have main three characteristics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Firstly, has to be all powerful to create this sophisticated universe, correct? That has to be all knowing, meaning it has the knowledge to create this universe and this be created by that. And it should have an independent will. There is nothing forcing this creator to create what it is. So this creator decides to create and decides not to create, decides to create and decides to create. So these are the three new things. You accept this? Yeah. Now since it's all known, or this place is all known, now, what, what he has created of course, that's the distribution. Now, if it's about, create, for example, species, you know, we are, we are like other species. Well, as other elements, there's a piece of jump that is about, you know, eating and drinking, reproductive. 
Let me explain a bit more to develop this further. When I see a star there, I think it's just there, right? If, if that was a star, imagine that, that's the moon over there, right? Yeah. Now, if that was a star, if I saw that as a star, the normal general people understanding is if you're not really into science, you think the star is right there. But the reality is, the star at this very minute, it's not there. That was the position of the star hundreds of millions, if not billions of years ago, when the star was there. The star, the light from that star was traveling, traveling, traveling. It took millions of years to come to us to observe it. But by that time, the star has moved this position from there. It's no longer there. It's gone. It's like this. The star emitted light and it's coming, coming, but the star is moving away. 
and by the time it goes there, they start somewhere else. So why though? Because that's how great is this. this is but, 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 so you think God created all the stars? No, but, 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 I wanna, we want to make an important point of this is something we were amazed to hear. The I think we probably have uh, just slightly missed it. The stars that we see, they are not there. We only see the star that was there at one point. Do you agree at this that? It's called the position of the stars. Quran makes it mawaqia and nujum. And it's a great oath, but you are not yet aware of this. God is addressing the people at that time. You're not yet aware of the meaning of the term position of the star. Yeah? So now we discovered recently that after this discovery and after recently we knew through telescopes and everything, now we know. Those stars who are millions of years away from us, what we see now, when we observe them, we literally observe the position of the star when the light departed from it. Yeah, not the star it. itself, it's the position. Who told Muhammad to open him and the light of them? So does it keep, uh, does it keep the light there or something? Are, no, no, the light has come to us already. These lights, they travel, yeah, come yeah. to you, oh, right, okay, right, yeah, yeah, but yeah. the light, is the source has moved away. Right. So the star moved away from its thing. So the Quran is highlighting an aspect called, oh, it's the position of the stars. Normally people would not even understand, what do you mean by position of stars? Because what you see is what's there, but it's not there. So that knowledge to a scientist, to an astrophysicist, should be striking. Like how would someone even know this information? Because, because... And there's someone illiterate, unable to read and write, and will bring this information and to be discovered Muhammad after illiterate. Yes, illiterate. So how, 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 illiterate. How, 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 Allah revealed him the knowledge yeah, to him. Like Allah informed him about this information. Who so taught him? People who say like he yes. wasn't. So, so who taught Sorry. him? So like no. people who say like yeah. Muhammad was not illiterate, like he okay. No, no. It, that, that's yeah. Quran says he's illiterate. Now, so you mentioned God taught him, and now when. Okay, that could be one coincidence. Okay, let's, let's move on to the Quran. Let's talk more about it. Okay, the Quran says, Have you been to the sea? Have you been to the ocean? To the ocean side? What do you think the deepest point any diver could die 1400 years ago? Without any. Without any equipment. How many meters? Like 10, mostly. And mostly. Maybe 10, 15, 20, whatever. Would anyone know what is deep in, in the ocean? Um, a, mile, a mile deeper in the ocean, would they even know no, what, how it looks like? They didn't have the clue. Now, the Quran told us 1400 years ago about the sky. God says in the Quran, those who are away from that guidance of the light, like someone who's deep in the bottom of the ocean, above him there is a wave. Above the wave there is another wave. Above the sea there is a cloud. Even if he took his head out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it. Darkness up to darkness. And whoever God did give him the light of guidance, it has no light of God. My point is, God has given us this picture of darkness. Talking about people who are misguided away from the, from the garden of God. God could say they are living in the darkness, that's it. But God has described a detailed darkness. He says, not detailed. This detailed darkness, it's a scientific fact which is discovered recently. When the sunlight comes to the earth, and it's cloudy with that, 40% of the light will be reflected back, and only 60% will go through. And if there is the surface wave of the sea, what does it do to the light? It will break the light. So only half of it could go through. People could appreciate this, could understand this. But no one would know that deep in the ocean there, there is another layer of waves which they are called the sea current, which they travel in a different direction. Whatever remains of the light, it will be broken by this by this by this way and deep in the ocean even if someone took his hand out of his pocket to look at it he will be unable to see it this is in a time when people used to assume the eye could see by itself the layers and layers of darkness and there's total darkness in the ocean in fact the living organisms in there they have their own source of light yeah, yeah? you know that so the quran is saying there's layers of darkness going darker and darker and darker to a point with absolute darkness we have like infrared yeah. visually can you see them yeah, yeah. so absolute darkness that's something that people wouldn't appreciate and know and not only that 
the, the very fact of the existence of inter-oceanic currents or waves. Did you even know that there are, just like surface waves, there are waves underneath yeah. the oceans? You could not see them, because you, if you go up space with your satellite, you can see them perhaps, but did they have satellites back then, 1400 years ago? Not. Yeah. So 1400 years ago, we did not have satellites to know that there were interoceanic inter waves. So when the Quran mentions all of this, it's for us to reflect and say this knowledge could not have been known by any human being at that time. Even, even if you were to dive, you would not observe this kind of wave because this book is from him. And as well, and as well for example, what do you think people they would know about the development of the fetus in the womb of the mother? We don't want to know that. They made lots of mistakes by assuming, like yeah, yeah. Hippocrates, Aristotle, Galen, and various yeah. others. God has told us in the Quran, when the human being lacks similar to a blood clot, similar to this, that it evolves and develops into that what is similar to a bite. And this bite develops into bone, and this bone is covered with the flesh, and this flesh becomes a new creation. Just to give you a background context, at one point, there was this scientific consensus and understanding for the majority of the people that human beings were like um, a miniature human being in the sperm form of a man and it became bigger and bigger and bigger. And in 1673, Van Leeuwenhoek, when he had his very simple microscope, but he was powerful enough for them at that time, he says, look, we can see that and they actually drew like a human being like this and then it becomes bigger and bigger. It's called the pre-formation theory, which is of course, it's false, it's incorrect. But that's what the belief had even in the 1673 at that point. But the Quran, 1400 years ago, is telling that no, human beings are created in successive stages, development one after the other, one form of the other, from this stage to the next stage and so on and so forth, going against even the scientific consensus of the day. Okay? Now we appreciate and realize the Quran has been clearly saying what we know all along from today's understanding of science. But our point is, this information in this book, the Quran, comes from which source? It could not have been come from any person, any people, any community from the socio historical milieu in the 14th century because they had a false understanding then. They thought the menstrual blood helped in co coagulating the, the, the male's discharge to form a human being. But we know that it has no function in creating a baby, menstrual blood. Okay? That's what they believed. So, going against the current, I mean, at that time, the contemporary scientific understanding, the Quran going against that and said, no, it's not like that. And now we ask this question, how did the Quran know and get it right? When you had, say, 16 different types of theories and all of them are wrong, some right here and there, and Quran gets all of them right from someone who doesn't have medical science knowledge, someone who doesn't have scientific knowledge, let alone any knowledge of reading a book of any kind. The Quran tells us if they knew that you were able to read and write, these are questioning, answering your question, they would have doubted. The Quran says, yes. you know, he, they know his community has seen him not being educated and learned because at that time, not many people had the luxury of being educated in an institution and have the learning. Many people didn't know how to read and write. Those who knew how to read and write are a certain group of people. So. When Prophet Muhammad Islam is already mentioned in the Quran that this is the case and he's bringing you the Quran as an illiterate person and going against your consensus and your science, proving you wrong, what should be our rational expectation of this, this phenomena? He is the scientist back even then. You know, look, we're calling him the best scientist, the best philosopher, best, uh, you know, people provide the, the best economist, best military leader, everything apart from messenger. All of that is to demonstrate to the people that he is a prophet of God, a messenger of God, as a proof and evidence so that people can believe in that book and have faith and certainty. Because anyone can say I'm a prophet of God, right? But the Quran gives not only the, the, the guidance, it gives you the proof and evidence with that guidance at the same time so that your heart can be settled your mind can be settled because your heart and mind will be at sync at synchronized with this understanding you will say yeah it makes sense to be believe in one god rather than many 
it makes sense not to worship an idol like a monkey or an elephant or a half human, half elephant, or it makes sense not to worship in multiple of deities, three in one, five in twenty, whatever. But whatever it tells you about God, that God is all one, absolute, independent, self-sufficient, he is not born, doesn't produce children, there's no likeness unto him, your mind will accept that, your intellect will accept that, your heart will accept that. And that is what Islam makes people to willingly, voluntarily accept it. That's called the voluntary submission. Islam, as my Sheikh was saying, is, is a voluntary submission of oneself. By what? By this kind of processing critically, individually, without any coercion, without any force, by saying, I recognize the truth. I understand the truth. And I appreciate and it makes sense to me. And I want to follow this truth. That is what Islam wants us in terms of this kind of rationalization and intellectualization and internalization of this reality. And when you do that, you would not care about like, okay, what, what are my friends going to think? Like if I become a Muslim, that like, oh, I'm going to start eating halal and what and so, stuff like that. You know, people have all these things. So let's talk about the issues of hijab. Hijab... Before, before, before this, I no, no, I was not explaining or justifying. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. this is something that will come to you and you will do it because your faith will make you want to do that. It's not that you have to become a, a faith, like it's not something stopping you from becoming a Muslim, but you would want to yourself put on this hijab. So once you become a Muslim, because of this intellectual internalization of the reality and truth, you'd want to say, I don't want to drink alcohol. I don't want to go and you know, sleep around with men or women, whatever. I don't want to eat this nonsense food that is going to be unhealthy. I want to live a life of sanity, dignity, honor, respect, well-being, mental health, physical health. And once you become a Muslim, you will see this is exactly what Islam is providing. And, and also, before we come to the question, there are three things. Mm. Now, for example, there is one atheist. He said he was atheist. He became a Muslim. After I heard about one single heart about the What he said? He said, Muhammad, if either he is someone who is a true prophet of God, or he is someone who is advantage, someone who is taking advantage of, of the situation. One of these. And he said, and I was looking for anything that to see that he is advantages. He won't take advantage of anything. Yeah. He said, then he said, when I looked into his life, when I looked into his life, you'll find he lived poor and he died poor. So it's not about the money. Yeah. Now here, as well, in terms of authority, you'll see him sitting with his companion like, like one of them. That when you come in, you don't distinguish between him and others. He's like them, he's one of them. And as well, and he is someone who will humble, he will accept someone even. In someone, if he, once he was adjusting the roles in the, in the battle field. So, one of the, one of the companions, yeah? He was adjusting them, he said, oh, you hurt me. Then he said to me, he said to him, you take, you take back your revenge. Do the same thing again. He said, no, I was, you were, you were wearing something, you were wearing clothes, and I wasn't wearing something as a top. Yeah. And then the prophet came over and he took off the top, and he said, you do what I did to you. So someone who is that level, and yet he will humble himself to someone who is one of his subjects, of me, and yet he has no any arrogance or pride not to equal himself to someone like and he said one of the things, this is, this is, the, this is the statement. Then he said, then while I was studying, and I said, there must be a scientific mistake somewhere. Until he said, when then an, an, an eclipse happened during the time of Muhammad. And it happened when, when he lost his son. He had a son. Ibrahim. His son, Ibrahim, his son, and his son died. Then, and then, then the eclipse happened. A moon eclipse. And then people became, they were wondering, they said, this eclipse happens because either sun eclipse or moon eclipse. So they said, this eclipse happens because our prophet Peter Abu he lost his son. That's why God showed the sadness the, from the sky and everything that this didn't happen. 
So he said he could take the advantage of this moment to claim, yes, God is with me, and because of my, I lost my son, that this eclipse happened. That's it. And they would believe him. They would believe him. They would follow that. What he said? He came to them, he said to them, clarified for the humanity, not for him only, not for his for the humanity until the day of judgment. What he said to them? He said, the sun and the moon, they are from the sons of God. They will never have eclipse for the for the living or the death of anyone, including me or my son. So that shows at that time he said that I knew he is not someone taking advantage of He is someone who is truly sent by God. So you could see someone who knows this characteristic will it clarify a scientific fact at that time that those are signs which from God they will have never have eclipse or something except that what this argument will God win is not about the death of the living of someone as some people claim. Yeah? Even here in the UK, when it rains, someone died, they say, oh, even the sky is crying for him. That's not, that's not cry for anyone. It's always raining in the London. So my point is, people, they will try to the that they want, but yet the truth is we have to do it. you that misconception in their mind. And he was saying, I'm only little, and call me Abdullah or something. He's saying, I'm going to do it for a long time. So I have to stop you. That's why I love you. And no one more than this. That's how he used to be looking at the world. That's how he lived. What do you want? What do you want? And he died for me. So don't you know. do that. Be nice to you. So that's what I'm saying. Am I an idiot? Am I an idiot? Which is important. Let's just no, no, clarify what we just discussed here. Just one thing to find me. You see, to understand critically about a prophet and a messenger, we need to look at the life of that person and the claims they make. Because anyone can make a claim and say, I'm a prophet of God, right? I'm a messenger of God, so follow me and so on. There are many false imposters that came over the history that we know. Even in, in, in Christendom, so many false prophets, for example, they will tell you. So we know even history, people claim to be prophets when they're not, because they are some internal motives of it. So even if we were to say, look, I'm going to critically analyze the life of the prophet, just to see whether indeed he was a prophet of God or not, not just simply taken by faith, but because he says so. So when you look at his life, at one point, when he said, look, I'm not going to stop worshipping the idol, don't worship it, worship one God. They got sort of fed up and annoyed and irritated and said, you know what, say, don't say that anymore because it's having a great economic impact on their business in Mecca in Arabia at that time. Which God, because God can be worshipped anywhere where the people they want the to come to their idols to Mecca. That's what they think their business. Come with money, do the train, it's a lot of it's a booming business in Mecca at that time because there's so many idols worshipping going on. People who come from Syria, from Yemen and from all these different places. Him by saying none of them are worship we worship, we should not worship any one of those things, or worship God only, it ruins the the, the trade and business and it impacts their living and whatever, right? They didn't like it. So they wanted him to stop. He said, look, stop, stop. You know what? What do you want? If you want to be the king, we will make you the king. If you want to be the richest person among us, we will give you, just ask for whatever wealth you want. More than all of us. More than all of us. If you want women, is this what we're after? Just name them. You'll have the woman. Now, if someone was an imposter, think about it. <laughs> if someone was an imposter, I'd say, ah, my golden opportunity. There you go. Make me a king. Make me the wealthiest and give me all the women I need. Right? You know what he said? He didn't want any of that. In fact, in another occasion, in fact, he said even like this, even if you were to give the sun on one hand and the moon on the other, I would never stop calling you that there's no one worthy of worship except God alone. I would never stop. Even if you were to give me the sun and the moon in my hand. Because that resilience that he had in, in preaching the truth to the people. So he had the opportunity. If he was an imposter on a fake, now you know that that's what the fake and imposters will grab the opportunity. Yeah. He said, no, I'm not going to take any of that. Instead, he kept on and he was tortured. His, his 
the initial people who became Muslims, they were tortured and they were boycotted, they were killed. So much suffering, but they endured with all that. When he became eventually the leader, because when he went from Mecca to Medina, they all became Muslim, the whole community there. They welcomed him. They established the first Islamic community there. And they became eventually quite powerful, right? What happened was, even after that, he, when he came back to Mecca, so now he was like the leader of the whole community. So much political might and authority and power. What did he do to his enemies? All these enemies that made him suffer, his people suffer and die and kill and so on, he could have just wiped them all dead, right? He, he gave general amnesty. Forgiveness to all, apart from few criminals, he needed to demonstrate that you have to have few exceptions. But apart from that, everyone else was, if you are going to go to this individual, you are saying, and so on and so forth. General amnesty, he forgave them all. That's not what someone who has been tortured and fake and now have the authority and might would do. They would commit vengeance and revenge. That's what we see the political leaders and people do when they become in power. And opposition people, when they come into power... What happened in Germany, in, in Germany, in Berlin? What happened to them when the Soviet and, and the Allies, when they entered, when they entered Berlin? Look what happened to them. Literally, it's a mass killing inside Berlin. And as well, a mass raping of the women. Now, it was the case. To the extent, you will find garbage. Women, they, they had poison. They, they killed themselves before the Allies entered. They, gonna, they know what's going to happen. Yeah. So that's one. Thousands of women killed themselves in Bengal because they don't want to be there. So that's when the opposition or parties become politically powerful and so on. They do. But what the Prophet said: general amnesty, forgiveness to all, and so on. So when he then established the the, the communities with laws and so on, and he was governing like Arabia, right at that point. How was he living? He explained when he died. You would know the state of his living. So there are some elements now you can see in YouTube, a three-dimensional, um, 3D of his house. Like he had a mattress made of, you know, date palm leaves. At one point he was saying, what have you done to his wife? Like, he's like, he's slept a little bit more. It will hurt, because here, it will, you know, when, you know, when you lie on it, it will, it will hurt, it will, the, the, the size of it, it will be, you know, it will be attached to your body for quite some time. That From the palm tree. But even that, you were saying, why have you given more of that? You folded more to make myself comfortable. So that was like his bed, a brick or something like this, or is this pillow, when he could have had, at that time, we're talking about luxurious closings and so on, from Persia, from Rome and Byzantine and so on. But he didn't live like that. He had some utensils where he could have for water and maybe some from barley or something like that or something. And he had a shield that he, you know, um, that was it. That's his house. And that shield, that shield was mortgaged. Was mortgaged. No, no, because he lived, he didn't, he didn't want to live like a comfortable life, live like a king and so on, because his mission was to convey the truth, the message of the guidance to the people, not to live a life of luxury. So okay. what's the point of going and becoming more and more comfortable? And the last as well, and the last as well he, when he was dying, in his last moment, he asked his wife, do we have money at home? She said, we have 12 dirhams for her, for them. 12 dirhams, which is like coins. Yeah. He said, give it, give it to the poor and the needy. I don't want to face God for having the same So the wealth, to ask to that. think about his life now. He could have gathered all the wealth. In fact, his companions, his believers, believing companion, will give their life for him. If he just says, go and die, they will die. That is the level of support, commitment that people had. If he said, oh, give me the world, they would bring the half of the wealth of Romans and the Byzantines and the Persians and so on. This is what it is. But he didn't want any of that. In fact, at one point, he didn't have days went by, no food to eat apart from date. A few dates here, there, you know, dates, yeah, tamar, it's called, okay. That is how the state of living, okay. So now we realize his, his living condition was such that it is not a person who is an imposter or a fake to live like that because he had all the opportunities to live differently because that's what fake people want because they want to make themselves happy, rich, famous, command, commanding, authoritative. 
He had all of that, but he didn't behave any of that. He was so humble and so low. He was praying every night. He'd wake up every night and pray like two thirds, one third, two thirds of the night. Why? Why would he do that? God has made him a messenger. He's forgiven him all his sins. But he, he says, Am I not doing how this be, goes? Alam, alam akuna abdan shakura. Would I not be a grateful servant of God? Even though God has forgiven him and given all of that, he would say he will still behave like this and, and thank and glorify God. What else did he do? In terms of <laughs> we talked about um, is, is some people say, you know what, he did all of this because he wanted to unify the Arabs. Guess what? He was tricking against the Arabs. How can you do this? How can you bury your daughters alive? How do you bury your daughters alive? For what sin do you do that? Because you will be questioned for what, what you do. That. Because they had the tradition of when a female child was born, they considered it's a financial liability because they have to marry her off and so on and so forth. They would take the live child somewhere else and bury her alive. That's how it was. Really? Exactly, yes. So That's how they were. Can you, that was the norm. And can you imagine someone who is standing against this? That was the norm. That's how much... Why do you think people... Think about it. Why do you think people from all around the world, from different cultures, from different backgrounds, why they believed in him? Why do you think this? Why do you think someone... This brother from Bangladesh, another brother from India, some brother from Africa, from all around the world. Why some people will believe in, in someone who is an Arab man in India, live in the so just to continue, that shows that shows the great character of history up in here. So the question is to you, Sister Georgia. I will ask you: Do you believe in God? After we following Georgia, I was following. After after we discussed about God, do you believe He is a prophet from God? So that makes you Muslim. Really? Yes. <laughs> but you have to, to accept Islam and become an official Muslim. The person has to take a step, which is the testimony, which is the person has to testify. There is none where the person except Allah, meaning Allah is the one God, and to testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and then you will be officially Muslim, like all Muslims. And when we remember of 1.8 billion brothers and sisters of Islam, you will be our sister of Islam. And we'll be there inshallah. Great, and Jesus is also a prophet. To teach you, and I will be there inshallah to teach you and to help you and all of this. Now, do you want to accept? <laughs> because in your heart, no, 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 what is it? Before the mosque, no problem. In your heart, you're already a Muslim. You're already a Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you coming back to that? Yeah. We will. And by the way, and by the way, uh, we have. I, I run as well the the, the, the salah course that to, to teach people how to pray. I do it at least in part of most, which is true as well uh, as a part of my project as well with salah. So, inshallah, if you want it, we will we'll, we'll start teaching. But the first thing now is you, Georgia. Yeah, is you. Yeah. Now, since you are you in, in your heart, you're a Muslim. Yeah. To take that step of testimony of Islam, to say it, we'll say it, to say it in, in English, if you understand, and then to say it in Arabic, that's how it works, yeah? And then after that, it will be good, you'll be welcome to this 1.8 billion dollars of Islam, okay? Three reasons you have to do it for yourself, not for our Yeah. yeah. And, uh, All right? Yeah? Yeah. Let's say it together. Oh, yeah. Too much attention. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, she's like, oh, uh, so one second, brother. Yeah, yeah. But, but listen, sister, you're already there. I'm not convincing you of something which you are not convinced. You are already there. Yeah. yeah. So you just only, you're doing that as a position. Yeah. 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 So you are already there. I'm not. I'm not no, yeah, just, no, no, yeah. Yeah. So what we will say, just to, to say the testimony, you will become a Muslim. I to, I, to identify yourself as a Muslim and slowly, slowly, it's a gradual. Islam is a journey of learning. You keep learning and you learn and you learn and you learn. And all of us here, we're going to be there to teach you and to help you. And, and for any questions, we're going to help you. All right? Okay? Okay. Now, what do you think? Okay, let's, see, let's do the, the testimony. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, don't really, I don't really agree with everyone else. No, don't worry, don't worry. That's okay. fine, that's fine. Let's, that's let's, let's, let's go to one side. Yeah, yeah. Shall we go, go to, to one side? Or here. Total up to you. But you yeah, listen. Okay. Yeah. Listen, by the way. That's a lot of That's a great thing. Yeah, that's a great thing. By the way, you are, what happens? Let me tell you something. Yeah? 
you are a Rebidah. Just only to say, we'll say it in English, and then we'll say it in Arabic. All right? Okay? Repeat after me. <laughs> okay. No, wait, wait, wait. Well, I think, listen, I think, because, I mean, I mean, obviously, if she has to do it, you know, yeah. She doesn't need to do it in a mosque. If, 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 you, if you feel like you have to go to a mosque, there's no need to go to a mosque. You can make that she was serious about that. Allah. 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 And there's a few good things for you. Firstly, all your sins is wiped as if you are a newborn baby, you have no sins. Really? That's the first thing. That's that you are a new Muslim and you accepted this land. That's something which is great. Now, my advice to you as well, of course in Islam, Islam recognized Marriage of relationship, husband and wife to get married. That's easy. Can I switch you later? Thank you. That's the distinct. And of course, what is the key? Of course, so you read it as well to improve and improve as well. That's something which is in your advantage. But that's what we want. We want the good for you and we hope the best for you. And if you have any questions or as I mentioned to you, you will uh, we'll, we'll take an exchange or contact with you. And if you have any questions, we'll have, I have a tour. Are you first there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I could give you my number. And, uh, yeah. Sure, sure. We, we generally have like a sister's group, like, only sister's group. Like, we have sister's group for WhatsApp. Right. So, you could share it with us. You can write it down. I mean, if you have uh, the number. any questions or something, then you could direct there, ask your question there, and then the other system as well, they will know that. If you have anything that you want to share with them, or things like that. And as well, they, they, some of them, they have the same experience like you. Some of them, they might have certain things. They'll say, oh, how can I go about, for example, to explain this to my parents? They have, you know, a river, they can relate to each other, they can, they can help you out. That's something which is a journey. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's very important to be in company yeah, with Muslim sisters to help Muslim you, help you develop yourself, not only yeah, in knowledge your, 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 but in practice. I'll give you. Should I give you my number and then you send me a text or something? Because the issue is we, we wanted to add her to the WhatsApp group. Well, like her, her phone is dead. Like her phone is dead. Do you have her number. I'm, I'm, no, Do you have I, I don't have. Are you I, like I just. Uh, I don't have. I mean. Are your phone's dead as well? She's just try to. Very exciting. Um, don't say it because I don't want these numbers yeah, to be okay. Okay. <laughs> for the whole world to to share. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think what I could do. I have my phone, but uh, do you have um, Facebook? Or something? Yeah, you can, I think I could give my number. I'll face it later. Yeah, okay. yeah. Give me. My phone is dead as well. Your phone is dead as well. What's your number? I have my. What's your number here? <laughs> What's your number? Then? Yunus. Where are you from, Yunus? I'm a Moroccan. 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 Okay, brother Yunus. What I will do later on, if you can find it, yeah, text me. Okay, I will text you. Yeah, send me a text, and then I'll give you, I'll give her your number, and then you add her to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's the sisters only, yeah. Yeah. so you can, yeah. you can um, comfortably discuss between yourselves rather than yeah, people interfering. Uh, the sisters group, which is. Uh, I mean, listen, because you've been like have. interested, Georgie, yeah. Yeah, if they have sometimes they relate to each other. That's now you have a bigger responsibility. Now she's a Muslim, Muslim sisters of yours. If you are intending to have relationship or marriage and so on, you have to do it in a halal way. That's why I said to so, I keep saying to you. As well, whenever you wanted to do the nikah, inshallah, the marriage. He can help it. He can help this. You don't get married though. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, we, you um, know, I keep telling her, like, like most of the time. We talked about like the, you know relationships yeah, and stuff because I, 
I used to live in the middle of the I used to live in the middle of the and, and you know, like, I mean, lots of young people in my age, they just have like random sex and whatever. But totally, that, that's, we don't do that. You know, like, we don't do that. Like, I mean, I, I've had friends who are probably Muslims, but not, not good Muslims. They would like encourage you to do that. And, like, to, but like for me, like it's a no, you know. So like I said to him, like that's why I cannot do that. And this is why. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, that's something which you That's what I want from yeah. you, inshallah. So whenever, whenever you so, wanted to do yeah. to go with this, let me know. Islamically, you should have a guardian, by the way. <laughs> Like for, for, for the, the father to make sure, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you know, to make sure that you know there is someone you know be there for your husband. Make sure that fulfilling your rights, etc. So I don't mind to perform this at the point whenever you're ready, and then after that, yeah. you know, I'm not an easygoing person. <laughs> <laughs> to him, not to you. Yeah. <laughs> so now yeah. you, you will be checked, and yeah, she yeah, will sure. she she will <laughs> now look at you how well you're behaving as a Muslim now because she's a Muslim sister. So all the honor and dignity and respect and the right yes, exactly. that you have to maintain that okay <laughs> in in the the approved way and do not interfere with her rights and responsibilities, obligations and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, yeah. It's okay, because you will be she accountable is, she, is, she, she probably for anything learn, that you do. She should learn from, from women more than me, do you know what I mean? As well, as anyway. well she, and I will tell you something. So, we've warned him. Many, many, <laughs> many of the sisters who accept Islam, one of the things that happens when they get married to a brother, and then when, who doesn't show a good character, and then they will judge Islam sometimes. And yeah, yeah. I will tell you something. Do not judge Islam through people, not him, not me, no one. Judge Islam through Islam itself. Not from the people. People they can do are sinners, they make mistakes, they are shortcoming. Because you did not become Muslim because of how he's convinced you, you convince yourself because of the evidence that you've seen of the Prophet about Allah and about the Quran. So make that your arbiter, even if he's to mistreat you, we will make him accountable. But that's not how you should then say, oh, because of him. Um, I mean, why, the thing why, is, so we started so talking about this the other day. That's okay, brother. <laughs> we were. Um, Don't worry about it. Um, it's okay. I'm not asking for any justification. What I'm saying is, may Allah help you, help you and started. increase you in your journey yeah. she, she and in, in develop you interest. and make you a she, um, scholar of Islam. Was a friend of through mine. you, then other him, people yeah. can accept Islam through you. Okay? Because we wish you for not only the best, we want you to become the light for other people to become Muslims. Because because this is a need in a society like this, so that you can encourage others. To see the misconceptions people have about Islam, and then you know, not only that will sure, benefit you. We're talking about different things. Yeah. Okay. We can have a discussion afterwards. Yeah, inshallah, maybe. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like some, you know, misconceptions we have. Yeah, they were wrong. So do you want to? I mean, just go home now. Just whatever the home is, or home or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Have a sh shower and, yeah. and, and then and thank Allah, thank God, yeah. for grateful to God <laughs> that He has guided you. And by the way, why I why I but in, in, earlier why I told you just wait a minute because what happens some brothers mistakenly what they do when someone wants to take the step of Islam they would come they would jump they say oh hold on maybe they want to. this moment the person will reach the level of Iman wanted to take the shahada. So when someone just postponed this one, sometimes the shaitan sometimes wanted to, to postpone it for another day. You never know. So that's why. So be grateful and thankful that Allah has guided her. You know, because this is what we believe as Muslims, you'll realize we cannot convince anyone, neither can the Prophet to guide. He's not able to guide. Allah is the one to guide. We are only the conveyor of message. Conveyor of message. Even the Prophet, our Prophet, he tried and tried to get his uncle, his own uncle to become Muslim. And he couldn't. He couldn't. So the guidance is not in the hands of us or even in the Prophet. The guidance is in the hands of Allah. So we should be really grateful. We should be really grateful and thankful to Allah for this. Okay? So, you know, may Allah, you know, bless you. May Allah bless you and increase you. Take care, right? Yeah, I'll send her the number. Okay, go ahead. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. For those of you, just text me, Tell text me, uh, about Jero Park and then we'll be in touch, yeah? yeah. About right. Jero Park, it's okay. Sunnah, not okay. Shia. <laughs> Shia is uh, okay. Okay. for the faith. Okay. 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 But, but brother, it's okay. You, you are, you're a Sunni brother, yeah? Sunni, yeah. Yes, yes. Shia, it's okay. not uh, Shia, Jero yeah. Islam. <laughs> no, no, no. no. So just um, some general comments to uh, our audience, brother, uh, yeah. to explain. Alhamdulillah, there are a few things that I wanted to point out. 
that in da'wah, I will advise firstly, if, if someone is interested in Islam, let them come and meet us here, we can do this. But at the same time, just give us some space. Because sometimes, it is, you know, it's, it's sometimes because when a person reaches the moment that they want to take the shahada, some Muslims they will say, oh, hold on a second, maybe this, maybe that. We don't force. We, we see that quite force. often. We yeah. see that quite often. We, should, we shouldn't force as Muslims. We are not allowed to force anyone to become Muslim. But at the same time, as well, when someone having that moment, we should allow it to happen. Yeah? So we shouldn't interfere. Because, alhamdulillah, we have experience to do this. The second thing, as well, alhamdulillah, that, that make Islam make sense to many people all around the world, alhamdulillah. Whenever we see a new Muslim, Allah, I feel, alhamdulillah, that Allah put us in the right time, in the right place. We never know. Allah used us. Allah used us, alhamdulillah. And we ask Allah Azzawajal that Allah to keep using us for his cause, to convey the message of Allah Azzawajal to the people. And at the same time, we, even if someone took shahada with us, we didn't do the, the, the biggest effort. The biggest effort is through the other Muslims who are around them, who educate them, the other people who wrote books and leaflets, giving to them. All of these things, it's a, it's a compiled effort. It's not just only an individual effort. So when, one, when someone accepts Islam took shahada with me, it's not, it's not me, it's the whole Muslims who participate in this, they have, they, they, have, they, they have done the effort in order to bring people to Islam. And that's a key thing. Yeah. That's fine. So I just want to remind our audience, you know, you can see the, the, the effects, the effects of efforts, we should always try and, 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 and put our efforts in conveying the message because if we didn't do that, you know, how do you expect people to remove their misconception about Islam and to see the light of Islam? So always, always brothers and sisters, you know, in whatever capacity, and even if you have one ayah, you convey to the people, even if it's just one ayah. So you try to learn about Islam, yes. understand Islam, make yourself better representative of Islam, yes. practice Islam, of Islam, practice, practice, practice Islam so that people by through your actions and your etiquette and your attitudes and your manners and your behaviors, they will be more interested in Islam and they'll say, I want to be like you. How is it that you are so nice and kind and truthful, not deceiving, not mocking and so on? So your action should be an important part of your dawah activities to the people, but increase your knowledge in Islam. <coughs> Learn and sit down with scholars and, and alims so that you can learn the manners and, and the ways and approaches of giving da'wah and inshallah Allah will make you a great da'ya so that through you, the next generations that we are trying to empower, through you and your families and your friends and your offspring, inshallah da'wah will continue stronger and stronger. You know, our lives may be limited. Do we know when we're going to die? We don't. But we want to continue the legacy. So you, inshallah, continue. And, and help the people who haven't seen the light. Try your best to learn and to impart this knowledge to people. So people can at least accept Islam and not go into hellfire. <laughs> الله يا أخي أحبك في الله جزاك الله خير جزاك الله خير I love you for the sake of Allah عز وجل may Allah عز وجل unite us in the day of judgment with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم all of us and all our brothers and sisters جزاك الله خير ما لا روح جزاك الله خير